I remember this one time in high school, I slacked off of studying for a U.S. history exam until the very last day. I figured I had no choice but to pull an all-nighter. How else was I going to memorize every major U.S. event from 1754 to 2001? So I got my study snacks, notes all put together, sat down to study, and then just a few hours in, I fell asleep. Uh, I woke up just knowing that I was going to fail that exam. But then, to my utter surprise, I managed to pass. Did sleeping help my brain to convert all these dates and names tumbling around in my head into an organized long-term memory? You see, the purpose of sleep has fascinated scientists for centuries, understandably so since we sleep for about a third of our lives. We now know that sleeping is required for long-term memory formation. In fact, most people don't know that sleep disruptions are actually one of the first signs of Alzheimer's, a disease marked by progressive loss of memory. However, we don't actually know how sleep changes the brain to allow for memory formation. That's where I come in. I'm studying how neurons or brain cells communicate with each other during sleep to translate what we learn during the daily basis into something that we remember over the long term. Unfortunately, understanding how 170 billion neurons in the human brain communicate is a bit of a daunting task. But you know what's easier to comprehend? A worm brain. We use teeny tiny worms that have been genetically engineered to have glowing brains. Here's an example where each of these spots is an individual neuron that lights up when it receives a message from another neuron. Now, all of these worms only have 302 brain cells, but they're still capable of learning and maintaining a memory, as long as they're able to sleep after learning. This means that I can place these worms onto a microscope and watch as their neurons communicate their experiences live, in action. So what do we know now that we can see into the brain of the worm? Even though sleeping worms are inactive, their brains are not. In fact, not only do their neurons continue to communicate during sleep, but their brain activity actually shows differences depending upon whether those worms have learned or not. I was like, whoa, could, these, could we be actually seeing memories form live for the first time? Could these worms be dreaming? As I continue my work, I hope to elucidate how this exchange of information in the sleeping brain helps to cement memory. At least, at the very least, I won't be making myself uh, not sleep instead of studying. Thank you.